Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I am Zach Clapman. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We, we were supposed to do rally cars and we didn't do rally cars. Like we literally were, we were scheduled and everything. We didn't. Yeah. It'll we happen. haven't talked to rally cars in a really long time. I mean, you don't get to drive them that often. Hard to get access to. Uh, rallying's a really tiny motorsport, as awesome as it is. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh, yeah. I'm not even going to the rant about how I'd rather find them a better way to watch WRC. But, I mean, WRC YouTube channel is pretty amazing. That's, like, yeah, they, like, they film they it do. as well as I think this is this really highlights why that rally will never grab a truly mass audience because. They film that sh- that event so well, and they've got drones, and they've got cameras mounted on the car, and the editing's mm-hmm. good, and they've been doing that for a long, long time, and it still just doesn't pull people in. Partially because you have to pay for it, I think, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, it's just not relatable enough to your average person. Well, it's also you see the car like if you're on a normal rally stage, you go to one spot and you see the cars pass once each, and then if they crash two miles down. You never see them. We don't know. Yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah. You're not going to see them again, anyways. That was that was my experience at rally in the hundred acre words. A, a Volkswagen GTI went by, and I was like, "That was cool." And then I didn't see him the rest of the rally. Right. Yeah, watching it in person seems it's like mm-hmm. camping but louder. I I don't know why. <laughs> that's exactly I don't know why what rally that. is. Like, <laughs> it's it's it cool yeah. to like work on a team or something, but to stand in the woods and just like you know that's why they're grilling and drinking beer in the middle of the woods. Exactly. Yeah. It's camping, but other people are having all of the fun. The, the yes. shot of the uh, the car off the jump that actually runs into the Phantom, the DJI Phantom, is one of my favorite ones. Because that drone pilot had been doing that quite a bit, and he set up for the shot, and the car launched f- farther than he expected, and so he was going with them, and it just ran right into it. Oh, I didn't see that. That's I haven't seen that either. Yeah. That's super cool. I'll dig for that later. So Okay. Yeah, please uh, send me that. Yeah. As always, we're socially distanced. We did it way before it was ever mandated. I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast and Zach's on the West Coast. You can normally tell by our lighting patterns normally where we are. Ross (laughs) Ross is just sitting in his kitchen, doesn't count. Uh, There is news this week. There was news. Well, yeah, it's just since we talked. Uh, (laughs) The Hummers are fat. Really, really unbelievably heavy. So I think last time when we did a show, we talked about, I think we, there was the video of it on like the test track. like The, the terrifying uh, crab walk video. Yeah, the crab yes. walk is literally uncomfortable looking watching it slide sideways. It's even more terrifying now, now that you know it's 9,000 pounds moving sideways. 9,046 <laughs> pounds, which puts it not just heavier than the H1, but heavier than all of the dually crew cab heavy duty pickups. Uh, what did you say? Like three and a half it's, times as heavy as a Miata. <laughs> it's two F one fifties or four Miatas. This is oh, like the the like, wrong way to calculate that. But you could have bought five Miatas. No, it's not. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So a a twenty twenty one Ford F four fifty dually, which is a giant vehicle, weighs eighty six hundred pounds. Jesus yeah. Christ! And this is wow. 500 pounds more <laughs> yeah but this is this is but this is the green vehicle you guys this is yeah dude earth friendly view this is <sighs> silly have we talked about that every single time we brought up the hummer like if it was we jokingly said 10 percent smaller 10 percent lighter like what they could have done instead and now we know that it's like 10 percent of nine thousand like eight thousand pounds is still fucking huge what it's well, crazy yeah and i guess in their defense like the other giant vehicles in this i guess the dually's not really in this class but like trucks have gotten really big they all weigh a lot there's a lot of hardware to make them strong and now you add the, a battery which i think probably weighs way more than a full gas tank would mm-hmm. um right i mean like like a 20 gallon gas tank gal- gas is like seven pounds a gallon so if that's yep. full that's only 140 pounds which is not very heavy considering the amount of energy right. it holds but I think there was a news out this week that the, the battery pack alone for the F-150 is like a 1,500 pound pack. 1,800. 1,800. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, the so, source on that is President Biden, by the yeah. way. <laughs> like it's, oh. Yeah, he's yep. the one who was like, yeah, it's like 1,800 pounds. In the middle, well, he, middle he broke the, the news. Yeah. Did Ford confirm it? or Ford gave him that information when he oh, was okay. there test driving no. the he Lightning. broke the embargo. So, he did everything so that none of us to, were supposed to do. And Circle back. In terms of comparison for weight, 
So it's 1800 pounds for that battery. And Google is telling me that, so let's say diesel's eight pounds a gallon and let's call it a 30 gallon tank plus a Duramax motor itself is about 900 pounds. So it's still, still like eight or 900 pounds more just for the battery. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, I mean, lighter than I thought for like a giant diesel engine as well. Yeah. Those big Cummins that they use are, are, are more, I think, but. St- so the news breaking is that the thing that was the heaviest that we all thought would be the limiting factor with an EV is still the heaviest and still the most limiting factor in an EV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This just in, uh, batteries weigh something. Yes. Grass green, sky blue. And solid state is a myth for now? Yeah, just, I don't think it's, it's not ready, right? I, I, the last thing I saw was like Toyota and that was like six months ago. And Mm -hmm. that was even then was in the testing phase. Like nothing is near production for anything, I think. No, no. Still nine, like that's scary. That's the kind of thing, the same way where a Hellcat is 700 horsepower and somebody just walks in and buys it and they have the keys to it. There's people who aren't qualified to drive a 9,000 pound machine it, that are going to be in them. It has to be the heaviest thing that you can get with a regular driver's license. I can't think out. of anything else that would be anywhere near as heavy. Uh, ah, I learned if I, if this isn't true, the the listeners will correct me. <laughs> someone, someone told me that if you buy an RV, uh, when like the large Prevost RVs don't require a commercial driver's license, what? Because it's a privately owned vehicle. You're not transporting people, so you can buy an RV that's okay. the size of a bus without having to get a bus driver's license. You can um, go rent an RV from like RV America and drive around the country with just a normal license, which is true. Right. Good so point. those, like, I bet. But actually, how much but is the city? This thing's, sp- but also, like, an RV is slow as fuck. And a, yeah, yeah, you can't, <laughs> can't break for anything. But like, the Hummer they're saying is going to do zero to 60 in under three and a half or something. Like, I don't know. That's it's, ugh, I'm so scared. I drove a really small car. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be interesting. People are going to learn about physics. You make a good point. People are going to go really fast. They're going to think in their head, this is as fast as my Tesla. And then they're going to mm-hmm. turn and they're going to go straight. Yeah, that'll be interesting because a city bus weighs twenty five thousand pounds. So that oh my is, god, good. That is much that's heavier. That's great. But, um, but like you said, they're not fast, and you, and you drive an RV very carefully because you're aware of how big you are. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Like, I'm have you ever driven sh- a box truck, like a rental box truck for moving? Yeah, same thing. Like you know the limitations versus yeah. this. Everybody's doing it, and like everything, it's normal. It's a car. It's uh, you know, it's got CarPlay and all that shit and heated seats, and and they put their foot down and turn the wheel, and it. And it crab walks across the lane and scares everybody. Exactly. Yeah. So anyways, I other- think you should jump to the next EV. Yeah, let's do it. Um, okay, next EV. So well, as we- I shouldn't call it the next EV because it's probably the EV that's to market before anything else. Oh, before the Hummer, before the Rivian, before- oh, I'm talking about Tesla Cybertruck. Got to be talking yes. about Tesla Cybertruck. Oh, oh yeah. That is ready yeah. to go. My boss saw it in person a couple of weeks ago and was like, there's no fucking way that they're making this thing. <laughs> like, and he's no. not, you know, not a car guy, but um, yeah, F-150 Lightning. So yeah. the first time Lightning is kind of a, it's a model that has a totally different prerogative from not just the F-150s, but what Lightning used to mean. So it's an all electric, it's supposed to be the first all electric pickup, which Fucking cool. I mean, Zach, you literally within like the last couple of months spent time with the hybrid F-150, yeah. which is probably a little closer to the standard F-150 than to the Lightning, the all electric one. Um, but yeah, you guys used a bunch of this. So they're, they're touting not just, you know, full-time all wheel drive and everything you would imagine from an electric vehicle in terms of range and power. Um, but the big thing that we've been talking about that everybody else is talking about is that it can actually discharge power and use its electric onboard battery to power other, like they made this huge stink about powering a house. If there's blackout, like, okay, great. That's going to happen twice in the country after that goes on sale. But I mean, dude, after last winter, the ability to power the house for an hour to two in, in like we're in part of the country that is prepped for winter we still had rolling blackouts during that polar vortex mm-hmm. and they lasted wow. an hour to two. Like 
the ability uh-huh. to just plug the truck in and get the furnace back on would have been huge. Well, that was that was one of the really cool things about the the F one fifty hybrid with the power boost. If you get the big battery pack, the seven point two kilowatt one, that's the one that they they really showed off. It has like four plugs in the back. It's got a two twenty, and you know you can run a welder. That you if you plug it into your house and you know fill the tank with gas, it will run for. Uh, it was like 35 hours at max draw. And really? if the draw is lower, it'll run for 85 hours. Like really, Holy I, shit. You gotta, I, gotta, I have to find the spec because it, it's like, obviously if you're pulling more energy, you know, you're going to burn a little more fuel because it kicks on the engine to mm-hmm. replenish that, uh, that battery pack. But what's really cool about the hybrid F-150 is it can be a generator because that's what it is really. Right. Effectively so, an onboard generator. Yeah. It's a, it's a built-in generator that has some plugs in the back and, and, and the, um, the battery is used to propel the vehicle if you're at the optimal conditions. And I was surprised at how often I saw EV power um, and the RPMs go to zero. Like I was on the highway going 60 and all of a sudden really? it was like, yeah, which, you know, I just, I've been driving the new NSX and that almost never drops the tack to zero unless you're sitting at a stoplight. It's really for torque fill, but with the truck, I mean, I'm cruising on the highway and going downhill slightly and it just went, oh, we have enough charge that we can keep this truck moving at this speed and it would just go to zero and then the oh, road would flatten wow. out and it would kick on. Um, so it was, it was pretty clever about it, but that one to me, it's one, the F-150, the EV is really cool because there are a lot of people that I think are excited about EVs or curious about Teslas, but it doesn't fit their lifestyle. And this is a very utilitarian thing. Right. As you long can't as show up at the job site with a Tesla in some places. Yeah, you actually probably can't even drive into it, you know. I mean, also if, true. If, if it's all bumpy right, Chris? and stuff, like, right, Chris? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to get in there. So, um, you know, the only, the problem, and I was just talking to a friend about this today, is do you live in a place that has the charging infrastructure to charge this truck and its giant battery? Because to, to run 220 out of your house is still going to take, like, 15 hours or something. Yeah, that's to, to give 14 to, hours. You know, yeah. Pre- yeah. And yeah. another thing is, like, if you live near cities, they might have more of the Electrify America chargers and whatnot, but it'll be interesting to see how the private market like Electrify America responds to a more um, like, I don't know, cities in the middle of America. I don't know how you guys mm-hmm. can speak to this. Are there lots of those charging centers? Cause in the West coast, obviously we have charging everywhere because we're, you know, super lefty battery people, but, um, <laughs> and it's, it's a city density thing, but if you're out in, you know, rural Montana, there's probably not going to be, Right. An EA R- center, Rural Montana, so. you're charging at home. <laughs> like, right, you're charging at home. There's probably it might take 20 hours. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or longer because the number of those places, like once you get far enough out, and Zach, you, you, have, you spent time in Colorado a bunch, right? Like once you're far enough off 70, like there's a bunch of people that have alternative lifestyles for power. Like I know a guy who runs his entire house on hydro because they have a pond up the hill <laughs> and they cool. run it through a pipe. That's fucking down. amazing. Like That's you turn right. on the coffee pot and lights dim, like they're not charging anything. No, like, they're not. No. But, but they're, they would also probably consider some kind of solar installation to be able to provide charging. Which they haven't because that's like 20 grand right now. Okay, fair. Yeah, that's not that cheap yet. I think like, the, you know, my, my friend was very being a bit negative about um, the truck. And I think something to remember for everybody is like the problems that exist today probably won't exist tomorrow. You know, so, so people are going, oh, we can't, char- what if I live in a town of a thousand? Like, where's my supercharger? It's like, yeah, you shouldn't buy the <laughs> EV Lightning. No, you should get the hybrid and then like use the gas. That makes total sense. This isn't for everybody, but um, I was surprised the amount of responses I had on my Instagram uh, were very positive from people that had either ordered an F-150 Lightning, mm. curious about it, or guys that worked at dealerships and were like, you wouldn't believe how many people have called about this thing. I, yeah, I mean- I, I have to admit, like I missed the power boost being able to charge the house as a generator. Like I knew it like yeah. could do like power tools and stuff. Yep. I missed them mentioning, hey, go ahead and plug in the house. And you're right, Zach. I saw 85 hours on a couple of searches. Okay, you found like, it. Low, yeah. Lower draws. Yeah. yeah, 85 hours. Like also, even if it's like full, 40 hours, like I'm the only, I don't think we actually lost power last winter, but like people we knew it was maybe like four to six hours at the most extreme. Mm-hmm. like where texas was days like but gasoline and texas was bad last year i forgot about that yeah texas was miserable and and you're also right like like we are i'm 100 percent in the midwest like but i'm in the county that's most likely to, to also 
adopt EVs. And so we, there's a okay. number of them around, like Whole Foods has one, uh, the, the public library has five or six out front, like cool. they're around, like, mm -hmm. um, and there's always EVs at them, which I, I think that's more surprising is like, you would think the infrastructure is not as developed here, but like people have already adopted, they're already mm -hmm. on board. And I was thinking like we, the way we were looking at it as my wife using it as her commuter, cause it's her commutes, like I think 12 or 13 miles. Like oh, geez, she's yeah, only nice. plugging in at home for six, seven hours a night. Like the, the amount of energy she's using versus what she'd be able to mm -hmm. refill each night. Like she'd probably have those batteries topped off most of the times that she'd be leaving the house. Even so you charge an EV to 80%. That's like what you're supposed to do most of the time. I, don't know. I so, I'm on board. I, I, but I'm still a Rivian fanboy. I love the R, the way the R one S looks. I'd still love to get a behind yeah. the wheel of one I'm still pulling for the little guy. But like now that like when the taken came out and now that we have an electric F one fifty, the most like, I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. I think it, Rivian might be in big trouble because I, and I was, I was a fan I was like, they were the first movers on that of, you know, rolling out a concept of electric pickup, at least the first one that seemed legitimate, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nicola. Um, oh, gosh. And Riv Rivian was I haven't like, heard that name they, in years. <laughs> they, were, they were developing, they were doing a good job and it was a great idea. And, I, you know, whatever their delays were, the, the delays could have been supply chain last year, but like now the, the biggest truck seller in the world just rolled out, you know, well, there's, a, a, an there's EV truck. There's Ford investment in Rivian. There is. I know. I'm very curious to see if in the same vein of how the Teslas and also of how a Raptor on like the opposite side of things can stand as like, they're like status symbols, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. 1% of people who own Raptors go off road and Tesla is the equivalent of, you know, it's been the trope for years, but it's the apple of the car. Like the, if you have the most current stuff, like I'm really curious to see if the electric F-150 is a status symbol, if people are buying it so that they can, you know, show everybody that they're whatever. I don't even know what the right word phrase is for it, but. Actually, I think you've stumbled on something that you might not have recognized. If Rivian gets to market, Rivian may become the status symbol because they are, because isn't the Rivian like $130,000? So it's going to be like. like 70. The, so it's going to be like the defender of electric pickups everyone's got an f-150 you're like no no no. i got the rivian because i don't because yeah. i can afford it because <laughs> that well and rivian markets theirs as off-road ready like yeah where the, it's like 14 the inches of ground clearance like highway tires like it's... whoa yeah there yeah, was so... one picture sorry zach no but there was Good. one picture of a lightning on like all terrains and they like they hit it in the press release I... people will take it off-road you just can't you can't go that far. Yeah. <laughs> you really, Which you got the exact same thing as the Rivian, right? Like, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, like, uh, I still um, haven't watched a long way up. I'm super curious, no, me either. Um, but I'm super, super curious to see what happens with Jeep doing those charging stations for the 4XE Wranglers that they're, they like, they're parking all these like solar charging stations out in, in Utah. So, like, if you go off road in one of the hybrid or electric Jeeps that are coming out, you can just, charge on the trail if if they make that work that is are you allowed to swear on this podcast yes Man, that's whatever the fucking fuck awesome like <laughs> i have when, when i drove this electric uh tesla sand truck for three years ago on drive on nbc sports and it was so fast and crazy it was like the guy took a tube chassis buggy sand rail and then put a tesla drivetrain in it and it Jesus. was you know it weighed like 2300 pounds um <laughs> Cause he, cause the batteries were, he didn't need the full battery pack. So he shrunk mm -hmm. it down and it was sick. And I was like, dude, if you could just tow a trailer with this and, you know, like a huge solar array out into the mm -hmm. middle of Glamis or wherever and camp and just keep charging the thing, like it's going to charge slower than if you had a generator mm -hmm. or something, obviously, but that, that is amazing. You could just be out there for a long, oh. long time, charge up, drive around, charge up, drive around. That's what Emmy said they were doing with the ID4 that they raced. They would put it in a trailer, drive like they had like a dually or something, tow in the trailer, and they would charge it in the trailer between stages. But uh, this is for Rebel Rally, right? No, this was for uh, Noro Mexican 1000. Okay, because she did a rally in 
they had Rivian. Rivian. Yeah. It, yeah, but they had to charge it using a diesel generator that was on like a huge truck. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which, so, I mean, when, when we explain it like that, and it, it, that sounds like cheating, right? But like, all the gas vehicles have to pull up to the the literal semi gas tanker to get their fuel. Yeah. Like there was nobody I don't think really it's cheating, but I think like. And she's awesome. I've met her. She's great. This is like not trying to, you know, talking <laughs> down about her or Lynn. Like, I think when, when what you're saying is our EV was able to do this rally too, mm -hmm. the next question for everyone is going to go, oh, cool. How did you charge it? And it's like, well, we had to have a truck with us with a generator. It's like, okay, well, now we're, you're using fuel to create electricity. So then you could drive right. without using fuel. Yeah. It's now that, that's a problem that hopefully will be solved and you could have a solar array or something else like that out there. It was more demonstrating that the truck could do it versus like we've solved the infrastructure of charging in the desert. But it was, it was marketing, not a full on demonstration of being carbon neutral or anything. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe actually it's my fault in the public perception of, Oh, are you demonstrating this is carbon neutral? It's like, no, no, no. We're just showing that the truck yeah. go up the hill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty much. I mean, she, uh, she talked it's, about it's, burnouts in the sand. Yeah. That was right. <laughs> Yeah, oh, the, pic and the pictures were good. Yeah, smoke yeah. in the sand is awesome. So, I don't know. I'm just waiting for somebody to take one of these F-150 Lightnings and make it rear-wheel drive and replicate some of the pictures, you know, from 20 years ago. <laughs> you mean like with a short cab and a short bed? And yeah, just chop out half the battery because that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, somebody definitely uh, threw it in front of. Uh, God, what was the cafe in Fast and Furious? Um, oh, the place with the tuna. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no crap. I mean, someone Who will knows? probably, someone will convert an old Lightning to a Tesla drivetrain at some point, should. and then they'll you'll have that comparison going on. Yes, and, please. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a cool step. I think people that need a truck for their daily life but don't actually go off grid and into the dirt, now they can drive an EV around. Mm -hmm. EVs drive great, man. They're so comfortable. They're so quiet on the road. Like they're, it's a really nice experience in in an automobile. Yeah, it's peaceful in something that's inherently not peaceful. Yep. Like there's an explosion happening in front of you most of the time, <laughs> you know? Like yeah. Dude, some, even, we take it for granted so much. Zach, we, we added a 2017 Suburban because uh, I have too many kids. I was and behind like, a Premier today, actually. Huh? I, was, I meant to behind send a you a picture. I saw, have finally the dumb saw 22 one. inch wheels as well. I was, yeah, it's fucking horrible. Fucking Sorry. Hate. Sorry. Used car prices and options are ridiculous right now. But- I was like, this is the newest thing we've ever owned when it comes to automobiles. Like, it's really smooth most of the time, but every now and then it'll get to like low RPMs at a light and just kind of, like, what is Shutter. happening right now? Like, why? It, is it doing uh, deactive cylinder deactivation going down to four I cylinder? Have, Cause I it'll haven't, fucking bounce around like crazy if it does yeah, that. I haven't like thumbed down the infotainment to figure out if it, like, it shows you V8, V4 when it does that. But yeah. I, oh. When I'm v4. sitting in the light, oh, yeah. I have, yeah. V4. I need to get a badge for the back that says V4. There's v4. a reason that no one makes a V4, and it's yeah. probably a balance issue. Yeah, that's, the V4 that's, and sometimes V8. Yeah. So anyway, the only other reveal was the Tundra. We got smoke and mirrors. Yeah, it's nothing. And now it looks like I closed all of the windows that I was going to share. Nice. <laughs> no, Toyota did today? the same thing that everybody does you know, six to eight months before they release a vehicle when they don't actually have anything pinned down and they show you just like a, a darkened image of headlights and you can't see anything and people take it and, and brighten it up and you still can't Lightroom's see anything. Um, but yeah, no, the Tundra is shocker. They're going to make it more aggressive. They're going to give it something that's not just a 5.7 liter V8 for the first time in 12 years. And yeah, lots of LEDs. I don't know, Raptor lights, which is the trend of all trends. Half the people with mm -hmm. Tacomas put them on them anyway. So yeah, why runners. not just four runners yeah. too? I will, I will say this does look like it has some like wider fenders. So the clearance lights might actually legally be required. Yeah, but I don't know. Just show us the fucking truck already. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> yeah but the, you know, that's everybody how marketing wants to works. move forward. Ford, yeah. Ford has been crushing the shit for like two years with like that. To be honest, the pandemic worked out great for Bronco release. We had nothing to talk Seriously. about or do. And so they give us each, like each week was another like nugget, a morsel of tiny information. Yeah. We all well, I about think it. The, the production line was delayed on Bronco, but they could just, 
they could just roll it out slowly. I mean, that's what they all do. Like it's a tease and it's a light and it's the thing. And then here's the thing. And that's how you make people think about it, you know, for longer than, mm-hmm. than just the day it debuts. You got to build that anticipation. Yep. And they collected all that deposit money. So I, I have never talked to so many journalists uh, that have put down deposits on a vehicle before as Bronco. Right? Like, Bronco. Yeah. You know, I wonder if Camille still has his. I believe he does. It's a lot. It's a lot of people I know that are just like, yep, yeah. waiting for mine, waiting for mine. I have also never talked to in person and given, haven't really talked to that many people in person like, over the last year relative to normal, normal. Um, but never talk to so many people who have mistaken one vehicle for another vehicle and saying, Oh, I saw a Bronco. Oh, what did it look like? What did it look like? Oh, it was like (laughs) small and the roof was black. Oh, you saw Bronco sport. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean sport? Ford did good. Yeah. The Mm -hmm, uh, pandemic was kind of Ford. Yeah. It worked out really well for them. I will say like the production delays that they're dealing with now though, everyone is dealing with, but, I feel like Bronco delays Almost. are more notable because well, it's, it's, the most, a- it's the most anticipated truck. I think possibly, possibly. ever, yeah. like really possibly ever. I'm trying to think of anything when the Raptor, you know, was rolling out, everyone's like, Whoa, what it was, what is this with this? It's a known quantity. We know we like the old one. So now we're, we have to judge the new one. And then when they start rolling out designs and it looks it looks like a new version of the first version. That's what that's what he wants. Everybody wants classic cars with modern function because yep. it's a design we know and we like already, and it's already baked in. So people went bananas for it. And it makes sense. Like if it works, if it works well, and it's reliable, like Wrangler, you know, they're going to lose a lot of market share. Yep. And and Bronco drives have already happened, right? Like the press has already had goes. I, I think so. I think very few people have even been like, in the presence of one. Like Motor Trend and a couple few. guys from somewhere else. But I, I didn't, those were like super pre-production. And I think they were all like the, they were the response to Easter Jeep Safari. It was yes. like the Bronco timed it. Like, <laughs> yeah. And they were also out there in Utah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I sound like a Ford fanboy and I don't own any Ford products or stock, but like their marketing team has figured out the cycle of yeah. stuff. They're like, oh, Jeep does something every March. Hey, guess what? We're going to do this March, like, right. or April, but yeah. Yep. I don't know. I'm my, I don't want to talk about Bronco anymore because like, it's still like, it's, it's actually smoke and mirrors until it is in production. Um, but the 2.7 is the only engine you can get with the stick. And you can get it with the factory 35s, which means that people are going to put 37s on it within the first four days. Right. And 37s and a 2.7 is like, where, where are we going? You know, like how high strung are we trying to make this? I know it can do it, but like, can it do it with 150,000 miles? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a question for all things today. Direct injection plus turbos. Like, I, we don't know if it, I don't think that, you know, many of the engines of today will be the four liter Jeep engine of tomorrow. Like they're just, they're way more complicated. Um, There's just more systems involved. I hope I'm wrong. Like I want everybody's car to last forever because I don't like it when things break and people have to spend money. But, you know, there's just a lot more going on with engines today. So anyways, let's, uh, let's talk about some non-news stuff. Chris, what's going on with you? You're, uh... it's just raining. It's, it's just, raining. <laughs> like I made the joke the other day, we need to invest in an ark because literally, like, I think you should build a boat around your house. Friday before like last, dish. like we, my my second kid turned. Well, we did his birthday party. He turned ten today, and then uh, that night, like we got home and it started raining, and that was the like the next day, like the first baseball games got canceled, and then like Sunday it rained, and Monday it rained, and two like literally up until today it rained today but we played baseball today for the first time in two weeks like it was just kind of weird how the site like we are so ready to get outside like we're all tired of being in the house well Uh, if you if you if you guys stopped sinning so much it would stop raining (laughs) this is really (laughs) our fault exactly uh yeah we're not gonna stop that anytime soon uh yeah just ready for stop raining i we are things are uh becoming firmer for the montana trip this summer um I bought crossbars for the Suburban yesterday. Gosh. I ordered them. Um, From? Uh, the internet. I'm not. Chevy's like 350 or 400 bucks. What? Like even the Yakima's. What brand? 
I don't know, internet brand. Oh, I um, thought you. I got them for like a hundred bucks. I did. There was okay. a set for like fifty seven dollars, and I was like, no. Like, <laughs> like, I want... like rooftop bar, or what are yeah, we talking about? Just crossbars okay. on the for the the side. Rails. Just got the side rails, and yeah. you just did. which and we did discuss on the show before of me going like. I don't know if they slide or they get no there's literally four spots up there with plugs in it that uh i can set the two bars in these four spots and then it looks like i've got eight allen style screws that go in and mm -hmm. hold them in those four spots and then the yakima skybox will sit on top of it and then cool. we literally have as much cargo as possible and one of the biggest vehicles on the road then you just get the hitch carrier and fill it with stuff no, too no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and you can you can live off grid for like six months at that i do point. i do kind yeah. of wish like i need to start like maybe we need a solar panel we don't with need a solar panel. roof box okay no. you can actually i think yakima or tuli i can't remember which sells a cargo box that has solar built into the top like into I, the lid which I think is it's crazy yakima. it's yakima yeah uh yakima cargo box it's cool. i wonder it's like usb chargers that they have in the box or something yeah it's so yeah cool. it's yakima <laughs> Because I was looking at that. We're looking at the creative C ways to... The CBX range. CBX solar. All right. So you could like get to wherever, you know, your camping destination and charge cameras or... Uh, lantern Off of the battery. Lantern, yeah. yeah. 30, 35 right. watt or 36 watt or 5 volt output. Two USB ports. Okay. okay. I mean, if it... I want... I'd have to know how many devices it would charge. Like, that would be... Like, yeah. If it'll charge, you know everything you have to a to a like a reasonable extent that'd be cool if it's like you can charge two headlamps before it dies like you're just you just want a thousand dollars from me that's what exactly. you want. Uh -huh. this is yeah. you want to be able yeah. to say that you're selling something with solar right yeah so but we have been uh so it has the the 4g lte uh data in the truck uh and Two of the kids have phones and two of them just have like one has a kindle and one has an old iphone that we didn't activate the cellular on so like as long as he has wi-fi or he can watch like kids youtube or whatever um it's gonna be an interesting conversation when we drive out of cell service with the vehicle somewhere in montana and he's like oh, why does my stuff not work anymore <laughs> he's like i'm in the I car can't... it's supposed you to have, work like you have four kids <laughs> that are gonna learn that they're gonna try to learn about out the outdoors and looking away from a screen yeah. all at once like we, we, we have been like prepping them. Like most of them have been camping with us. The two and a half year old, she is not prepared for what's coming. So no. I've also been like, it's got the, the two, two DVD screens in it. So I've been like in Walmart, I'm like, what's on the 375 bin? Like, Oh, trolls world tour, five bucks. Bam. Like, <laughs> cause it's four days of driving two days out there, two days back. Like I yeah. need something. So. That's pretty funny. Yeah. We, uh, I don't know. It was very different growing up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I, we did, I've, I'm sure I've said this on the show before. We did a trip from Kansas city to winter park. Yeah. Cause we stayed at snow mountain range and uh, YMCA of the Rockies uh, up to Yellowstone back across South or Yellowstone, Jackson hole in some variation of order. I don't remember how that went. And then back across the Rushmore and then across all of South Dakota and back down to Kansas city. Uh, and I think it was like a 10 day trip. And I think I took like six books and I just read book. I was like 14 at the time, just read books in the back of the car. <laughs> I remember in probably 2000 when my dad got a Yukon and it had on the back of the center console, it had like a tiny little screen and two plugs for headphones. And you could like plug the headphones in and, and listen to your own radio in the back instead of what they were oh. listening to on the front. And I, I was like, it blew my mind back then. And now we're looking at, you know, DVD, like DVD screens have been there since like 2005. So the, so the really interesting part is we still have, because we had an 03 Yukon XL that didn't have any of that crap in it too. We bought like the portable DVD screens. Mm -hmm. So I still have two of those that just nice. run, run through like a 12 volt outlet. So I can strap two of those plus the other two. So we can have three different movies going if we want to. You're going to go camping and come back and your kids will be like, where did we go? Like, where do we? Exactly. That yeah, was a right? weird movie theater. Yeah, exactly. When I, great. when I was a kid, we looked outside the window. Right. And that's where we watched. No, no. Thinking about we, those we, Google we had, glasses. We had Game Boy and stuff like that. But, but everything when I was a kid was just dependent on batteries. It was like how many. Right. 
my my parents were like, oh, you burned a, a set of double A's. Like we're not buying you 16 hey, batteries for this drive. Hey, shit like, out so, of luck. Yeah. Like read a book, look out the window, listen to music, something like that. Yeah. CD players and books. That's all we had. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Anyway, pretty that's, much. that's my update. As you're prepping. Okay. But not like awkward prepping, like not doomsday, just like trying to get ready for four kids to try that's across the country. Probably not dissimilar. <laughs> There, there are true. less MREs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. All right. So, yeah, I, I don't have much. Um, have you made a is decision? In, no. I'm currently still trying to figure out the quad. So the, okay. I thought that I had just broken the steering stem. I know I, the axle destroyed and I have another axle on the way. Um, but I thought that I had just broken the steering stem itself. And there's like little like gear set splines that interact with each other and like, it's sheared it's like, like Valtteri Botas's wheel nut today. let's not talk about that I don't want to talk, I, talk like, about it. it was so much fun to watch oh no it was not as somebody who roots for him because the Mercedes underdog like no it wasn't fun to watch that um Do you a lot of fun to watch shirt right, on right now no I have a oh, okay I couldn't tell that was the little ATV sim- park shirt on okay. uh no the race today was boring as fuck with Monaco's the best um you talk about Lado took p3 I'm good yeah, and he's also third That's in the championship. Cool. Constructors That's is awesome. also McLaren, so yeah. Yeah, I love, I love Lando. He's the best. And him and Carlos Sainz on the podium together today was amazing. They were having so much fun. And it's like, meanwhile, Ricardo's down in 12th, and he's just getting shit on. Dude, he got you know? lapped by He Lando. got lapped by Lando. Yeah. What? Your teammate's in the same car. It's, what is it's happening? It's not good. It's not Sorry, good. Zach, if this is spoilers. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I mean, I'm not going to watch the race. Like, It's good to hear. And, uh, Bo- I, so I, Botas I don't follow had, that call, but that's awesome. Botas had a wheel nut get stuck, and so he came in for his pit top. The right front wouldn't come off at all. And you could see the gun just firing and like metal shards just like exploding out of the gun yep. as it just stripped everything. And eventually the guy just stood up and had, he, he was, was like, like I, I, I can't do anything. Somebody's like, get a hammer. Him. I was like, there's no yeah. hammer that's getting that off. Yeah. Like, Crofty was like, somebody needs to get a sledge. I'm like, what? <laughs> you just, you can't just ruin everything on the ge- geometry so, up front. Yeah. And he was, he had a chance to win too. Which, see, I, I mean, it sucks for him. I don't, I, I know you said it was boring. It's always entertaining to me when Lewis is stuck in like sixth or seventh yes, and yes. can't pass anybody. And then hit the griping on the well, radio is almost no me. passes in that race. Compl- like almost zero passes whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a Monaco problem. A little bit of an F1 problem, but Monaco It's an F1 like, problem. It's too they, narrow. There's no, like, the cars there's no are too room. big for that track. Right. So that's that's like a Monaco problem. It, when there's no passing on any of the tracks, which mm-hmm. they've had that problem in the past, it seems like a little better. Um, They're trying to yeah. fix that. Yeah. Uh, it's cool to watch like i don't know i'm I'm always a season behind because i just watch it all on drive to survive drive and Land- survive, yeah. lando seems like the happiest dude and he just he's like 21 he just comes out of nowhere yeah. and starts mm-hmm. doing really well and it's it's cool to watch carlos sainz like you know he had yep. a rough yeah. rough season last year but he's really good yeah. everyone's like really good you know Lewis Almost is everyone. just the best i mean our, people in the top six are really good and then there's people that are in the back six but um well like at least this week it looked Oh, you're, if you haven't seen anything, uh, qualifying is going to be... Re- I'm really interested to see how qualifying gets presented in Drive to Survive. If that... I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I'll, like, I'll say that. It was like... it's Well, Zach will see it. Yeah. Year, I'm, dude, if you tell me now, I will forget. <laughs> okay, okay. I will. My memory so, is so, Le- so. Leclerc uh, was on pole, and there were like 18 seconds left in the session with Botas and Verstappen on flying laps, crashes. Mm-hmm. And, then, and so they thought that there wasn't any damage to the car. Wait, so who crashed? Ferrari, Leclerc? Leclerc, Leclerc crashed. crashed. Even though he's P1, he had the, which, the pole already. Which he was doing it defensively so that Max or anybody else couldn't take the pole from him. They red flagged it because he was just With in the middle of the track. Left, so nobody everywhere. could restart. And people were on their, you know, on their fastest laps and had to abandon ship halfway through their laps. And Ferrari basically said, okay, the damage isn't that severe. We're just going to keep him on the pole. We're going to let it go. And then he went out for a practice lap pre-race this morning and was like, yeah, the car literally won't shift. Like they apparently had just completely disregarded looking yeah. at the gearbox. Instead of taking it was switch the gearbox, three grid penalty, he would have started in what, fourth? It's he, a five. It's five. So he would okay. have been in sixth. But, but even so. Didn't start the race. Yep. At all. So he finished P, he qualified P1 and he qualified P1 and, P1 and, and, and finished 
last. No, they don't move wow. the field up. So Which literally was pole amazing, position actually. was empty yep. to start the race. So yeah. It was, so, by the way, this is now a Formula One podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, which 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 F one should we safari first? Yeah. All yeah. All to be honest, Stroll was doing a great job of it. He was on the hard tire and he kept ramping the sausage curb today. Oh my god, like, he there was, was jumping. There's air. all four off <laughs> a couple of times. His cars are very durable. Like if they don't hit things the wrong way, like you know, they get yeah. two wheels off a lot and come back down. You just assume it's gonna shatter, but it just so it's yeah. goes. <laughs> And you get to see suspension travel, which you didn't expect. Like it's really oh. weird. Although the the carbon arm that signs hit on that barrier when he came around that caused the crash. You just saw it go. Oh yeah, like just, it, that was the yeah. clear. But yeah, that yeah, that, that was, yeah. It's um, like an empty eggshell that is gone. Yeah. So now that we are, what was the name of Brad's old show? Was that uh, it, uh, DFL. DFL. Yeah, DFL. I think it was the DFL. Now that we're the DFL show. We're standing here for the DFL show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, circling back. Uh, yeah, so I thought that I just broke the steering stem, and it turns out that that steering stem goes into the power steering unit and is actually part of the gear set of the power steering unit. So I have to replace what I thought I had to replace, which is much more, much more. No, not the pump. It, there's no actual pump. There's like it's literally just an electronic motor with like a gear, oh. and it's it's all one piece. So yeah, trying to sort out that. Um, what, what is this on your ATV? Yeah, a 2013 Polaris Scrambler 850, which. Uh, it's fun, and I'm um, finding out very, very quickly that Polaris is not as durable as makes that I've had experience with, and I, I say that lovingly because it's an amazing quad, and the reality is, like, the somebody I know, I was talking to him, and I was like, it's like, I can't believe I broke something, blah, 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 and he's like, dude, you go in the woods, you beat the shit out of it, and then what? It's not yeah. like you don't like drive it casually ever you're you're always on it there's no in between so what you broke this how yeah <laughs> and that's not I, even yeah that's not that's bad. not even bad like i've seen worse like no. yeah yeah man i mean it's a thing here it's being used hard that's what it's meant to be meant for but right. everything has a breaking point uh pun and things are gonna, things <laughs> lots are gonna snap of, lots of lots of breaking and it does fit. I didn't know those had power steering until now. I thought it was just. Yeah. Like... They've been putting power steering on quads since Yamaha did it in like 2007. They put power wow. steering on the, on the big Grizzly at the time, which I think was a 660. That and is... I rode one and it freaked me out. And I was one of those people that was like, nope, never. I'm good. I don't ever want that. And then I had back surgery. It was like anything that takes the strain off of my spine is a good thing. Um, so, yeah. Now I, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Way easier it to breaks. Do that, which it, and it probably does it mitigate the kickback when you hit. That's uh, rock mostly stuff? mostly yeah. what it's good for, because it's it's variable. So at low speeds, you know, it has like, it basically gives you different weight than high speeds. But the best thing it's for is like you bounce off a rock and it doesn't slam a handlebar into your right. like thigh or you know hip. That's um, what the EPS systems and a lot of trucks and. Uh, SUVs do as well, you know, put it in rock crawl mode and like mm. it won't spin the wheel and break your thumbs. I mean, you should still keep your thumbs out, mm. but yes. How's your spine? Aren't you also in? Like, uh, it's, uh... it's better now. I was bad. Like I was meeting with surgeons and very worried. Like it's the most pain I've ever been in for an extended period oh, of time. It was like December and December and January. And it seemed worse than when I had a herniated disc the year before, which is the mm -hmm. same situation. Um, and then I just went to physical therapy twice a week and did the exercises six days a week. And like, it's, it's like, you just crawl out of this hole and it's amazing. I've had to learn this lesson twice. Uh, I hope I don't have to learn it again, but for anybody out there who's dealing with these kinds of things, like, I don't know, my, my, my doctor, I was in so much pain and they were still like, we think you're a good candidate to avoid surgery and you mm -hmm. should. And like the guy who's wearing, a fifty thousand dollar watch, and he makes money from surgery, and he's like, "You he's should like, avoid this." If you, yeah, if, if he's you saying can. that. Yeah. So I'm like, "All right, you know, you're not trying to pad your your checkbook." Um, so I did, and I, you know, I'm kind of good. Good. feeling pretty normal. Good. Which uh, so you've herniated disc? Yeah. Like Wait, oh, which one? L five S one. That's the one that I had scraped out of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, if you can avoid it, I mean, shit, like. Well, it's you know pt 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 because you still have to do the physical therapy right 
Like do you still I do, do all the yeah, stuff? Yeah, I still do. It's, I mean, at this point, it's mostly just stretching and core. Right. Like, I'm, that's, I'm that's at, mine is. this is, I think I'm four years out now. And you so have to also, keep, you just have to keep it up, right? You know, the doctor says you're supposed to do it every day for the rest of your life. Right. which sure. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, you know, has like unlimited time, <laughs> you know? Um, but it, you know, it's like, if it gets bad, like if, if pain starts returning, I know I need to start ramping it up. Yeah. Yeah. So so I'm, so I'm hearing I need to start good. stretch. Dude, <laughs> it is. Yeah. I, like I crashed a motorcycle in 05 and I broke 21 bones. This is worse. Well, shit. Yeah. This is worse. Like that hurt. That hurt a lot. And I was, you know, unconscious for the first week, which helps, but like, <laughs> it's you can't feel the pain if you're unconscious. Like, that's true. So I, I skipped that week, but like, but nerve pain, as you can speak to, like is different because you can't, you can't stretch out of it. It's mm-hmm. not like a broken bone that you take. I mean, painkillers actually, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't because it's just something is pushing on the nerve. It's just yep. hitting this light switch and uh, it's a whole different thing. And it hurts in places far away from where the nerve is being pushed. So you're like, why is my calf spasming? And they're like, have you oh, in your foot at all? Oh yeah, it, uh, the pain got down to the ankle. I didn't have the foot dropped. Okay. That's when like you might have a, you know, that's when they like you need surgery. That's but, where I was. You yeah. know, Chris, I would say like, I, I have a, I have more and more friends now, in the you know at my age or even actually younger than me that work in production and stuff, and they're starting to go, yeah, you know, every now and then I get like a little twinge. Every now and then my back hurts. And it's kind of like they're dropping like flies. Everyone's like, oh, I have a herniated disc. I have a herniated disc. It's because of how we sit. We don't yeah. exercise. Like, and I was in what I thought was good shape when I when I hurt mine. But um, it was like all these little inner muscles that you don't really work out when you do normal exercise stuff. And if you let it, like, dude, it is so bad. Like I... I realized that if there had been a fire in the building in January, I would not have been able to run out of the building. Like mm-hmm. I would literally not have been able to get up and walk out of the building in a very quick amount of time. Yeah. It was, it was fucking scary. Yeah. So how did you fare on your trip on the off-road trip? Um, I was, I was concerned about it, but uh, luckily the trip we did, which was um, for the smoking tire, which is uh, the YouTube channel I'm on. Um, we did the Southern California backcountry discovery route and we did legs three through six. So for people that are listening that don't know, which is probably not many of you, but the backcountry discovery route there, it's a, a group of people that have mapped out ways to cross various states in the United States using as much public land dirt road as possible. So a lot of forest roads, logging roads, things like that. And, and I've done this is my third time doing it. I went across Washington from bottom to top, uh, Utah, same thing. And then this time we did just a section of California because California is way longer than the other states. And yeah, there we go. So we started in Sahara Oasis, which is a very overpriced Chevron station on <laughs> Route 66. They were charging five seventy a gallon for gas. And this was what? a month ago. Jesus. Yeah. And gas is very expensive nationwide. It's up a lot. Um, in California, it's always more expensive, but Dude, this was, this always. was a dollar more than anywhere else in Los Angeles. Cause they were just like, uh, where else are you going to get gas? It's 270 do? here. But what 270? was it, you know, what was it two years ago today. there? Like it's, you know, it's, Buck and a half. it's crawling up. And, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, so we, we started at Sahara Oasis <laughs> and we drove up to, I think seven, which is Lone Pine. So we okay. exited mm-hmm. at Lone Pine and drove home. Lone Pine is, um, a small, just a really small town um, kind of between LA and Reno Sounds uh, like on the it. east side of the Sierras. And it's, it's a cool place. It's, there's all these little towns basically on your way from LA to Mammoth and then further to Reno and Lone Pine is one of them. Um, Lone Pine is famous because the Alabama Hills is there, which is oh, that yeah. amazing rock formation area that's like miles and miles and miles long. And all the rocks are very round and there's free camping everywhere. It's really cool. And then it, it butts up against the Sierras that are covered in snow, which is gorgeous. So, um, yeah, so we, yeah. So I, I was concerned about my back, but, uh, comfy, car, comfy truck. And then Sorry, once we were on the trail for a bit with the exception of one terrible section, which is from Prim, uh, to the Mojave National Preserve. Oh, it must have been really bad if you remember exactly where it is. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a dirt road that you take out of Prim and it exits 
it's in the back of like uh, some gas station. You just drive out this gate and then you're on this road. It's called Powerline Road and it runs along uh, parallel with power lines all the way to like the next highway. And on your left, you see one of the giant solar arrays that are installed in Nevada. Um, cool. Very cool. And the bad thing about this, that was the bumpiest thing we did. And it was extremely bumpy. It was like washboard road, but you know, more, oh, usually worst. washboard feels like it's like two, three inches tall. This was more like five to six and also covered in rocks. So you know, it's shaking everything, but it, but more than just that kind of that vibration that washboard gives you, this was like porpoising all the vehicles constantly. Mm -hmm. And it was annoying. It wasn't fun. Uh, and, and the scenery there, you look to your left, you're looking at the solar array that you also see from Highway 15. So you're not getting oh, it's, to yeah. see anything new. You're like, wait, we saw that <laughs> on the way to Vegas. Like, so, so that wasn't really worth it. And then you connect right. to a tarmac road, which you could get to. So, um, interesting. Yeah. The Washington routes and the Utah routes were like stunning from stem to stern. You see lots of stuff. This was more familiar to someone who lives in SoCal and has filmed in the desert a lot. That was the right. downside of it, but the upside yeah. spine was fine and the truck was great. And camp I, I love camping and being outside. So it was still, um, it was still a great thing to do. And, this is where you had the F-150, right? Correct, yeah. So we did this, um, let's see, there were three vehicles on the trip. So Matt Farah, he had a Sprinter off um, camper van built by a company called Off Highway Vans and rented yep. to him from a company called uh, Warner Sprinter in Utah. I, they actually gave it to us for free, but that's you can rent them if you want to. Um, I had the F-150 and then our buddy Tim, has a lifted fifth gen forerunner that sounds right i think that's right okay um and his his truck rode great that was like the best that was the best vehicle for what we were doing by far and it felt brand new it has 115 000 miles on it fourth on. Gen. that's fourth gen. gen he's got fourth gen he had it painted sand it used to be black oh that's and is that is that like the actual like toyota factory like sandstorm color it's that the they Toyota put factory on, color from like the next the, generation. Yeah, from like the current trucks. Yeah, so he had it painted in that after uh, Jesus. I think someone like dinged his door and he was like, whoops, insurance money. And nice. He had it painted. So uh, yeah, mm. and, and his truck perfectly blends in with the landscape. Yeah, right. So Unintentional was, camo. Do you know, you don't know what totally. suspension he has, right? I don't. I wish I did. Yeah. He's on like 33s or twos. Yeah. Uh, it rode great. It felt there were like no squeaks or rattles it handled washboard as well as any of us did we you know we all aired down on the day the second day mm -hmm. we wish we'd done it on the first day <laughs> uh, but none of what us know what we're doing except for tim yep. and there were a lot of highway connections on this route oh we, driving on the highway air down is so sketchy right it's, so that's uh, that we aired down 10 psi and that way we were able to be okay on the two lane highways yeah. but you know no more than that yeah so I still, I bought, I think we told you this. Actually, I don't know. You might've been on before that, but I bought Chris's fourth gen forerunner. So I have one like Tim's. Um, it has, is Tim's a V6 or a V8? V6. V6. Okay. So this one's a V8 and it has 270,000 miles. Um, trying to decide what to do with it. Right Does it now. still work? Does it still work? Mostly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Somebody posted on the 400 forum the other day and they're like, yeah, I'm going cross country. My truck has 508,000 miles. What should I do? And he's like, right. I'm taking a quart of oil <laughs> and just going like, <laughs> it's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's, it's wild. Really, really impressive vehicles, especially the they V6s. Overbuilt that generation of vehicle. The same thing with the Land Cruiser from then, you know, it's, it's just like the same thing can't be really said for like the current Tacoma. <laughs> So Rick yeah, Ross, I'm, I was really impressed. Go ahead. That uh, one we were discussing the other day is up to 9,000 on cars of bids. Fuck, really? Yeah. He, he's well, only at 142,000 miles. So it's almost half. <laughs> and Southern kept. It's, yeah, no. But your truck is not Southern kept. No, it's definitely not. Yeah, no. The long and the short of my potential plan Um Somehow you can place a factory order on a 
Wrangler for 8% under invoice, which don't know yeah. how that works. I mean, the dealers get kickbacks, you know, they literally get like a thousand or 1500 bucks just for selling vehicles and the salesperson makes whatever they make, you know, however they make it. Right. Um, so yeah, I might, uh, if I, if I can sell the forerunner, it might be placing a factory order because I've, I've wanted to Jeep my whole life buying them used right now. I know somebody that bought one brand new in 2018 and Carvana offered him $5,000 more than he paid for it. What? Yep. Is that because so, their inventory is down so much? Inventory is down. Used is nuts. Used is just like, it's right totally now. like off the rails and Whoa. Jeeps, Jeeps hold values. Yep in a stupid way. So I could, I could literally place an order for this Jeep, take delivery and sell it the next day at a profit. So I don't know. I'd, wow. I've been thinking about it. I, the reason I'm in the car world is because of Jeeps. So might be time much to the yeah. detriment, much to the detriment of my bank account, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see. Or so. you could get this 94 Hilux surf on cars and bids for, for uh, 14 grand diesel. Uh. Right Turbo right. diesel, three liter diesel. Yeah. Yeah. Those things are cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. Jeeps. I don't know. They're great. They, they drive pretty well on the highway now. So, you know, they do the things they say they do. Right. And like the reality is the stuff that I intend on doing, the forerunner has limitations and the Jeeps are closer to the, you know, day-to-day competence of a forerunner than they've ever been. Mm. So yeah, that's a good way to put it. You know, like when I was out in Colorado, I went out, my best friend moved to Denver two weeks before national lockdown, which was, you know, great timing. All the trips that I had planned out there went great. Um, so I finally ended up going out there to visit him and we, uh, we took, he has a third gen Tacoma, which, ugh, but you know, it's, it's lifted on KO twos and we like went up into the mountains and, and we did, um, Switzerland trail, which is like one of the big ones. Cool. And I was like, okay, I, I, I want to drive out to Colorado, drive the trails and whatever I drive out there in and be able to just like do that without thinking twice about anything, you know, and, and even the Tacoma was fine, but like, what was that? I don't know. Someone, oh, someone closing a window upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a bear suddenly. Um, yeah. So made in the forties. Uh, this building probably yeah <laughs> yeah we did one of those uh for work the other day but it was built in like 1925 and the first first step was like all of the windows have to be replaced yeah when i moved in here i cleaned them all with like vinegar and then lithium grease and then they Oof. were they were great but my name i'm not cleaning my neighbor's windows and yeah, so. no. <laughs> no. um so we, we yeah something about our- you know new cars that work well it's nice yeah. Um, not that I expect anything to go wrong with the foreigner. It's just, you know, peace of mind and just eliminating a variable. It, yeah. Yeah. I, I completely understand. Um, the Jeep will do more off road. And also, you have more options, I think, for if you want to change an outfit. And there's mm-hmm. a ton of stuff available for the forerunners, but there's more for the Jeeps. True. That's true. And I'm listening to manual. I could have swore I just heard a kid go, Dad. <laughs> we have like 20 of them. So the odds of four. odds of one of them saying dad at any point are pretty high. Right. Yeah. Four <laughs> kids. Oh my God. I have like, you know, I have a, I have a an aging BMW, a girlfriend and a dog, and that's enough. Well, and the I'm dog's the most recent. Like three. Yeah, the dog's the most recent. Yeah. That's true. Uh, dog's dog, she's the most reliable. Ten dog, and then BMW. <laughs> and the BMW. <laughs> no, it's pretty good right now. Yeah, uh, the video with yourself in the BMW arguing back and forth is still one of my most favorite. Oh, that was, yeah, yeah. Thank that you. Was very I, well I need to do more of those, man. Like that was that was really fun, and uh, I have I have some more in mind. I'm I've got I'm getting probably getting some new parts for BMW soon. Nice. Um, and uh, I don't want to I don't want to announce yet because it might be with you know a company that's giving them to me. And, and it's getting finalized, but uh, I think some more, some more Zach versus Zach honesty is on the horizon. Nice. Yeah, that was fun. Just love the whole idea of the bit. Like it just, 
was fun. Yeah, for people who yeah. don't know, I think it's I think it's on my Instagram. It's at the top of my Twitter, uh, Zach Clapman, and I I had a, a very honest conversation with myself <laughs> about my call. I don't know. It's like I was coming down from a review. I was like, I think I should. This is an idea. Like, let's just be really honest about. Like, I need this, to document this. this. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. What was that Paul Rudd show where he's basically? like having a conversation with himself for most of the show. Oh, it's a Netflix. I've show. heard of that. It was a Netflix yeah. show. It was very good. And obviously it was so good. I can't remember the name. New, of it, but... new to me or dead to me or something. No, he not cloned, dead to me. He cloned himself, right? Something like that. Hold on. Uh, something similar. Cause I, I, the internet has the answers. I, I should living have watched living, with, living with yourself. Yeah. I should have watched that show more because the, the lady who plays his wife in the show is an Irish comedian who I think is absolutely hilarious named Ashley B but I just saw the first episode and didn't watch after that, but she's That's hilarious. Okay. Go find her other stuff. Yeah. You I have just... four kids. Like you don't, you don't need to make excuses to me why I didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually uh, admitted to Ross the other day that like, I've been watching the, the star Wars clone Wars stuff on Disney plus there's like eight seasons of it. And it's from like 2006. Like it just never hit my radar, but like one of the kids is watching. I was like, you know what? This is, this is kind of good. It's pretty, it's pretty good yeah he's like, like why are the graphics so, sorry, yeah. so bad and you're like because this is 2006 before <laughs> yeah. you were born and graphics really existed yeah it's like the beginning of cgi yeah it was the the graphics are sketch every now and every now and then i'm like that's not but the lightsaber sound so it's, it makes up for it there um yeah so sweet so zach's been driving some shit Hmm? Zach, you've driven a lot of stuff. You've driven a lot, of, driven shit. A lot of stuff, man. Can it's we start really with the Alpha? Because it seems like yeah. the most amazing of oh, all. that was fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, we should probably stick with trucky off roady things, uh, <laughs> other than the, the F1 the F1 cars, of course. Um, yes. yes. Yeah. So the Alpha. So uh, Road and Track asked me if I wanted to drive this 1986 Alfa Romeo GTV. Um, and, and they were like, look, it's a safari out Alpha. We know that you've done a bunch of these um, backcountry discovery things. Because what what I guess for those who don't know, what I did the first two times I did the backcountry discovery routes, we did them for video, and the premise was we're going to buy a Craigslist car and see if it can make it. And we call it All Cars Go to Heaven. It's a video series on Vimeo. And the first the first uh, video, or sorry, the first one we did, we bought an old Jeep, and then eventually a Corolla, and the Corolla did really really well. And then the, the, next, the next, the next, the Jeep did not for, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, the take, not many people are going to watch it. The Jeep was either modified or repaired by someone <laughs> who I think was blind, had zero dollars and didn't give a shit about safety uh, yeah. in any way because the rear shock was welded to the body using thin aluminum tubing, like aluminum conduit that you put wires in. So that's- it wasn't, that's how it was not bolted <laughs> to anything so what so on day one when i saw the jeep um so i was sketchy. like i was like making a fire and i look over and i was like that's weird why is there what looks like a steering dampener on the rear axle good god and i walk over i was like that's the shock it's fallen off and in the top of the shock was this tiny thin aluminum tubing that had been pinched on each side to make it flat and then tack welded like up in the wheel well so of course it fell off like I was driving quickly in the dirt, but it would have shaken off. Like it could have been installed the day before we bought it. He did um, it 12 hours before he got there. The guy had, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't want to speak ill of him. I don't really know his situation. He sold us a shitty car. We asked him if it would go the distance. We said it would. We're going. And he said, of course. Because uh, he was trying to sell a shitty car. He was, he was trying, trying to sell it. a shitty Jeep. And I, and I was the one who suggested we get a Jeep. Because I'm like, look, these things are bulletproof. Engine will last forever. You put sand in it, they run. For the record, the engine never broke. But <laughs> for um, later visa, or straight it was, six, yeah. it was an XJ, right? Like a Cherokee, yeah. XJ Cherokee with a lift kit, and um, <laughs> let's see, that shock <laughs> fell off on day one, and then on day three, I think on day two, we figured out that one of the front shocks was blown, the uh, the exhaust cracked, and then on day three, hey, we were coming bad. down a mountain that had just it was 40 minutes of washboard, and we get down on the tarmac in this town of like 500 people turn right onto the tarmac and the tires just making terrible sounds uh oh yeah, yeah there we go um <laughs> so that's the jeep flew it looks i was so excited when we picked it up i was so excited because matt matt drove a brand new jeep and he's like i'm doing this in a oh, new car right. and i was like you're right. not gonna have any fun which i was he's, right about by the way 
He's got a <laughs> shit eating grin if I ever saw one in that he picture. He does because this is the first day when I was trying to hook up the auxiliary fan because it was running hot. And he's like, we've been driving an hour and Zach has the hood up. Um, <laughs> and he's like, my Jeep, he had a brand new like high Sierra, whatever, um, Cher- Grand Cherokee. And he's like, I have Wi-Fi and cooled seats and everything's fine. <laughs> so on day three, we're driving down this washboard road. We get to the bottom, tires making a ton of noise and uh it's just howling like something is wrong and we pull over in a gas station and look and there's just oil dripping out of the axle and what had happened was the vibration was so bad that the three bolts that hold the hub assembly to the axle had shaken out and then and the tire because of what it just whatever forces was the tire was pulling the hub assembly out of the axle like it had moved out like half an inch and just (laughs) hemorrhaging um transmission fluid that could have gone so wrong so bad the wheel could have just i mean if we had driven too long the wheel would have flown off possibly hurt somebody possibly hurt us we were we 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 realized how lucky we were that it didn't come off in the woods because we would have just gone tumbling down a hill so we bring uh, and none of us have the mechanical knowledge yeah oh my god you're really good at this yeah (laughs) that's holy shit i mean uh is the inside of the tire completely bald um I or think, is that just like uh yes it is so <laughs> when we bought the tire the tire had a cut around the entire circumference for some reason don't know how that happened i think the tire went bald a lot of that was just on the drive from like two miles away before we got to this gas station but we'd also been driving for three days the car the truck had whatever alignment i mean it didn't hold straight it shook like it was terrible it was terrible and and so none of us are, are mechanically inclined enough to know how to fix those things like out in the bush with the tools that we brought that ugh. so so this is happening and we there's one mechanic in town and we drive over to his house garage which that's what it is and we show him what's up and he's like we're like can you fix this here's what we're doing we're filming this thing and he goes you know i leave on vacation tomorrow and i'm not even fixing my customer's car so i'm not i, I don't have time to fix yours like he could not have given a shit and he, or he was a genius because what we ended up having to do is we sold him the Jeep for like $400 oh. and his wife gave us two large bags of homegrown vegetables because she felt so bad. We, <laughs> we had to give him, we, we fit as much as we could in and on top of the new Jeep. And we ended up having to leave like toe strap, tools things in that jeep that we literally just couldn't fit and we had to keep moving and it was like Jesus. we had spent so much money at the beginning of this trip to get all this gear that like i was like well what if we need to fix this and this and this mm-hmm. and you know it just turns out like i'm sure someone listening is going if you put it on a rack we could have hammered the thing back in or whatever but we just didn't know how to do that so so for a day i rode in the back seat of this jeep and i was just like pouting because i was so bummed that now i'm a passenger on this trip the jeep i chose broke um and then i started looking for other cars and and you know on the backcountry discovery routes sometimes you go through a town of 100 sometimes you go through a town of 5,000. like we're just you know and then for a while you're not you're around zero people so i was we're sitting on top of a mountain at this gorgeous campsite and i'm just going through craigslist calling everything that costs under a thousand dollars and this guy sells us his 87 toyota corolla two-door for 300 bucks and it's got uh yeah man this thing was the best it's got it's like carbureted it's got a smashed in front left headlight that still turns on uh stick shift and i mean right now this picture is showing the, the exhaust is strapped He's, to the roof that is at the some exhaust, point, right? <laughs> yeah, at some point we're going up this hill and we just hear these really loud sounds and we're like what the fuck like what's going on and and we get out and tom morningstar um our director looks under it and the exhaust had broken and folded backwards on itself so we had to uh, undo uh, like a hose clamp because that's because they use that instead of an exhaust gasket uh, a hose clamp with a leatherman and then we strap that to the roof so we drive it it does fine like it's weak on power when we get to high altitude we had to push start it and push help push it up hills like with like we put tom in because he's the lightest person in the group and then we would run and push behind it to get it like going to get up the hill (laughs) But the I thing was a champion, you know, I mean, on, on lo- large logging roads, it was like a rally car. We had a rally race at an empty campground. Um, yes, and we drove was, it all the way. That was a great segment. <laughs> that was a good segment, right? Woke up in the morning. There are zero other people at this campground. 
and it's all gravel roads. And we're like, all right, let's, everyone gets one lap for time. Um, Matt almost hit a log and, and me. <laughs> Tom, Tom set the record because he, he actually was like a rally co-driver for a bit. I think I was second. And, uh, and, we drove, and we drove it all the way to Canada. I know we've deviated from what I've driven this new, but this is hilarious. That's, That's okay. So, no. <laughs> so we drive this thing to Canada and this is like the little engine that could. It's amazing. This little Econobox champion that is in like just beaten on and it's just done so much total and juxtaposition of the jeep too which exactly is like what you, you know, think exactly. is supposed to be perfectly equipped right you think that you think the jeep would drive across the world but if you buy a bad one it's not um and that's what we had done and then this was this was a bone stock 87 corolla on snow tires that the <laughs> guy had owned for like 20 years and he's like i drive it every day which is a good sign if his daily driver is like i drive it every day here's where i've driven it um what you guys are doing is a little beyond what I'd expect, but I don't think it'll break. He's like, I don't think it'll break down. You might get mm -hmm. it stuck. That's on you. So we get to the Canadian border and the windshield wipers won't turn off. We can't turn the car off because we don't think it'll start anymore. The exhaust is strapped to the roof. And obviously it's just like covered in dirt. And um, Matt explains what we're doing. He's in the car in front of us. And then Tom and I get up to the, you know, the booth and we're in the car and, guy just looks around he like looks in the car he goes so can you turn the car off and we're like eh, we don't think it'll start again he goes okay and he just looks he's like all right well he told me you guys are making a video this is your finish line it's like so i'm gonna let you into the country for 20 minutes <laughs> you have to promise not to drive on the highway you have to promise not to go head to the nearest town which is 40 miles away like I need to see you back here in 20 minutes. He did not hold our passports because then we wouldn't be able to get back in on the U S side. Right. Um, but we were, and we were like, we swear like this, we're filming this thing. We're going to turn around. We're not planning to stay here over the night, which was all true. And that's what we did. But it was just, I mean, you pull up in a car with the exhaust ratchet strapped to the roof. Oh, sorry. There's also ratchet strap across the hood because at one point we're driving on a dirt road at like 60 miles an hour and the hood came unlatched and flew up and hit the windshield. <laughs> and so like, we look, we look so suspect, but uh, yeah, they let us in. And so that was the first um, video for All Cars Go to Heaven, which is what the series is called. And after that, we are big enthusiasts of like the safari thing of taking cars to do things that they shouldn't do. So that's why, you know, to go back to Alpha, uh, they were like, do you want to do this? And I was like, absolutely. Because what I learned on that trip is that the dynamics a car has in terms of how it steers, brakes, moves when you drive quickly, when you lift it, most of that is still there. I mean, yeah, like your roll center gets higher. Things happen a bit more slowly. You know, your center of gravity is higher, but uh, it's still like 70% of the way there and you still have the quick steering rack. And it just, it feels right to drive and slide in a car like that, like a rally car versus in a Wrangler or a Forerunner. Mm -hmm. And I know that you can drive those hard. Like that's how people do pre-running and Baja and stuff, but because they're already so tall, I think to drive in that way, one, it feels a little unsettling. Two, if you catch a tire, you could tip. They feel big and heavy. Um, and that's why they widen the stance so much on trophy trucks and things like that. But with this, if you raise one of these vehicles like two inches and then you put some slightly bigger tires on it, it's really amazing how true they feel to how they used to drive things just happen like a little bit slower. Yeah, and dull it down by 10%. Exactly, you know, so the Alpha, they, this thing was very built in, in some ways. It's built by, uh, designed by a coach builder called Oil Stain Lab in Los Angeles. <laughs> Great name. And uh, yeah, and they, they, they had built one Safari Alpha before that got very famous on Hoonigan when they jumped it, cleared oh, the no. landing. And that's those guys? That's those guys. They, they shattered their oil pan like a dropped egg. Uh, yeah which was one of the more surprising and crazy things I'd seen on that channel, which says a lot. I, I, I felt so, a lot. As soon as that hits, you feel bad because it's like the engine's done. And, and so with this, um, they work with a bunch of different fabricators. They had um, Scarborough Performance design their front suspension. And that guy is like, he just built his own tube chassis, single seat F1 throwback, which looks amazing. Oh, like it's this person, that guy. That guy. I like, knew it sounded familiar. 
he's a genius. Oh yeah, so, he's a bad man. So this thing was was pretty well done. I went into it with, I went in with worried. Like you hear old Alfa Romeo, so already, mm -hmm. yeah. See, this is their first one. Those are ATV looks, tires. Those are Maxxis Bighorn ATV tires. Are they really? <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> this this is the only episode of Hoonigan's anything that I actually felt sorry for somebody in an episode because it yeah. was so pretty looking and they yeah. ramped it and you were like, guys. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's when you need to take something out of, out of the page, the book from like people that actually build pre-run stuff. Like how do you prevent the oil pan from hitting? I need yeah. to know because my alpha just shattered itself. <laughs> right. What's so, the, the line that yeah. BJ says all the time is like, anybody can jump something once like trophy chucks are designed to just like <laughs> jump a thousand times more after this. Like, yeah. 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 That's a good point. He's the, he's the King man. He's the, he ran the, he ran the man line in his truck. That was so badass. <laughs> oh, actually, sorry. Kivitech did it first. Um, and then, um, and then BJ like jumped off of the loading dock with his truck. Yeah. Uh, so this thing had like, it was a two inch suspension lift with some custom components in the front and like beefy stuff in the back. And then the rest of the, the, the height comes from the tires and the wheels, which were a couple inches taller, just like, um, I can't remember which tires it was. They did a roll bar in it. Uh, they did a custom hatch, which was very cool because the roof on those cars, I think looks kind of weird in stock form. It's kind of bulbousy. So this rack, mm -hmm. they, they built this, like 3D scanned rack that holds <clears throat> two tires, um, like kind of like the outboard side, or sorry, inside from the C pillar, but those are the outermost things in the rack. And then inside of those are two metal gas cans. And um, and then there's a roof rack that held uh, some of those tracks, tracks boards things. Yep. Um, and it has like a little wing on it that just looks cool, some auxiliary, auxiliary lights. And the whole thing was built to help promote this clothing company it's an outdoor company mm -hmm. so when they give me this car i'm like i'm about to drive an old alfa romeo already flag on the play because like <laughs> what is less what's less reliable than an old alfa romeo not much um and then i'm gonna drive it into the desert to go get these photos far away from like the nearest alfa romeo shop to where i went was like hundreds of miles away and and I just, I, I brought some warm clothes. I brought some extra food. I had a photographer, just he had a car, case. but I was like, I was like, I am mentally preparing to sleep out here and I'll still be okay with it. Cause I'm just prepared and it'll be funny. Mm -hmm. But the thing actually, it ran like a top. Um, it's weak. It, it's way too underpowered for those tires. I mean, even for in stock, it's slow. Stock gears and everything. They didn't do anything. Stock gears. Um, they didn't change anything in the transmission. It's a V6. It makes, I think 175 horsepower, which is like back then, that'd be pretty quick. I mean, that's like VR six power, but mm. when you add a bunch of weight to it, you know, this thing was carrying, <laughs> now it's moving six tires. Add four inches know. or six inches of tires. Yeah, exactly. Adding a lot of tires. So it was slow in the sand, but it didn't matter. Like I was doing 25 miles an hour in sand and I'm sliding a little bit and just, you know, turning in manual steering and you just feel things like roll a little bit and settle. And it, it's just so fucking fun. Like to drive, Driving anything in the dirt, as you guys know, is fun and special and you get away from everybody and you can kind of drive how you want within reason. I mean, you know, don't don't go 100 miles an hour down an off-road trail unless you have crazy good visibility. And even then, mm -hmm. like, I, I'm not endorsing that. So don't sue me if you get hurt. But, you know, you if, if you're on the open sand, like everyone out there is going as fast as they can on a dirt bike and you can power slide around, do it safely. Like you can go exploring, you can go up this hill and down this hill and, and it's really, mm -hmm. really great. And I think, I think the safari movement kind of gets crapped on because it's gotten so popular on Instagram. Um, and there's a lot of people that, you know, build Those rigs numbers. that don't take them places, but mm -hmm. that is really, you're really missing out if you do that. Like if you yeah. have a truck, if you have a Jeep, if you have, if you have a car that you don't care that much about, or if you, I mean, honestly, if you go and buy go and buy a thousand dollar or a $500 car and just put snow tires on it. Like we did in the Corolla and you can take it on easy Jeep trails, be really smart about where your oil pan goes and you can go much farther than you, you think like oh, this yeah. car or the Corolla, the Corolla could have done everything we did on the backcountry discovery route in SoCal. Cause that was an mm -hmm. easier trail than, um, than the other two States. I don't know how it gets in the Northern part of California. It may get rockier, but Rocky. the whole Southern part is just like river wash, Packed right. down sand, like it was, it was basically like a forest road. It's pretty easy, honestly. Yeah, I mean the point you make also, like the weight of a safari car, is still substantially lower than 
any, you know, body on frame four by four. Yeah. That definitely plays into it too. Like surprise weight's important, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like what is, it really uh, is. you know, what is your Tacoma way? Well, uh, forerunners probably 4,800 pounds. Maybe. What? Okay. Yeah. So this, this car, I think when it was stock was like under 3000, uh, you know, the wheels, tires, things like it, it, it might get to, Oh, I meant the alpha. Wait, what? The truck was only 4,600 apparently. Oh yeah. No, I meant the alpha. Um, yeah, no, I mean, so, you know, you, you add it. If call if you got a thousand pounds, it's still a thousand pounds less than your truck. And that's, I don't, I don't know how much weight they saved going to a plastic hatch from the other one, but like, but whatever thing, it's definitely heavier than it used mm-hmm. to be. And it's still just, it's dynamically, you still can feel prop like you feel like you're driving on a road course at 10 tenths and you're just doing, you know, 30 miles an hour in the dirt, 50 yeah. miles an hour in the dirt. It's fun. It's really mm-hmm. fun. I'm, I'm scrolling Facebook marketplace right now. There's like a 06 Corolla. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a, there was a Kia soul that looked like it was affordable Ford. I'm Ford telling Focus. you, man. Like, and the good thing with, one with, with front wheel drive, nothing behind the engine matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's literally just along for the ride. Yeah. Like, you know, bring an extra tire and then, and the game we played with the Corolla and then in all, all cars go to heaven too, Tom and I bought a Hyundai accent. Um, you just, you know, watch the rocks on the ground and make sure your oil pan doesn't go over them. So if there's a big rock that you have to deal with, you know, you send it under the tire or you send it between the tire and your, where your oil pan probably lives. And <laughs> hope you're, you're just care. And you're just care. I, I learned a lot about wheel placement on those trips. Like I'm not a great, like rock crawling would scare the shit out of me. I've, I've done like none of it, but mm-hmm. that stuff helped me really, really helped me get better at like feeling where tires are when you're driving. <laughs> Yep. Sorry. Yeah, there's <laughs> Chris listening to us up. 1990 Corolla uh, DX automatic Ooh. runs, drives, shifts great. Do for an oil change. I have the oil and filter. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. Who writes that in the description? <laughs> like, what is it? Does that add anything? Like, no. no. How much is that car for sale for, though? A thousand dollars. Right. That's who writes that ad. Because you exactly. know, he's like, you know Something what this is? Think, yep. Actually, it's, what we searched was running car. You search running car. Yeah. That's, I mean, his car works. You want a manual mm-hmm. though, because you may need a bump start at some point. Yeah. My, my favorite part is the next line says, all it needs is a driver's side window to be ready for all weather. That's funny. For a grand? No. <laughs> like, let's trade something. You can, that you can find better. Yeah, you yeah, can definitely you can can find, better. find better. Just, I love the the passive aggressiveness on whether or not he'll do the oil change. <laughs> maybe, maybe I won't. Maybe go fuck yourself. What about that? Exactly. How about you do the oil change? I'm going to do you a favor? No. <sighs> Uh, sorry to interrupt jesus <laughs> oh, that's funny no uh, yeah, so it, was, it was a great day and it was uh and the car felt really tight and they dialed it in and it tracked super straight on the highway suspension was a little too firm actually it felt like yeah for, it was just too firm i mean it, it, it kind of shook a bit over stuff so did the back tires rub at all uh surprisingly no there was no tire rub really except like if there was like really hard compression and I was cranked all the way over. I was really impressed and shocked that uh, there was no rub. Um, but it had, you know, going back to the steering dampening thing, I was going like five miles an hour at some point, like slowing down. And the one of the wheels just like found some soft sand and decided to turn left. And I watched the like Momo Prototipo metal spoke wheel just spin twice really quick. Oh like, boy. It just went whoop, whoop. <laughs> and I had I had thumbs out the whole time, but like yeah. that's why you do that because that would have been 100%. really really painful. Um, yeah. And then it had the rear suspension on that car is something called a Dion, De Dion or De, De Dion. I think it's actually De Dion, invented by a French guy. And I still don't quite understand it. Um, it's there's basically a solid bar like a tube How that goes that? across the it's D E space D I O N. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pull up a picture. It's it it's like there's a six a, a metal pipe that's six inches, four inches in diameter, going across the underside of the diff, and so you have like this. It's like an IRS, but with this connecting tube. The tube is meant to keep the toe from changing under compression. Uh, it's really uh, odd. Yeah. So yeah, it's one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Yeah. If you go to 
I mean, that almost makes it look like IRS. Uh, yeah, so, so, so the yellow tube, that's like underneath the car in this thing. So right. in this drawing, the yellow is on top, but in the, in the alpha, it's like underneath. So it basically took what would have been, I don't know, six inches of ground clearance. And behind the rear diff, it made it like four or three and a half. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, why do they keep this? I mean, I guess it's, I don't know how much time they had to build it. It's, you know, marketing car. They're letting people drive it a lot, but that's something I would definitely, if I, I told them, I was like, add a hundred more horsepower and change out the rear suspension to anything that doesn't have a diaper hanging from it. Um, and it would be, it would rock and roll. Yeah. So this, uh, this is like almost like a bicycle, but it, so this bar that goes across is meant to, it, it like allows you to use half shafts between, um, the diff and each wheel, but connects the two wheels so that they maintain right. toe together. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. It's like a halfway between like an axle and a sway bar. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a good description. I also stumbled in just like the first three Google images that came up was a old Hooniverse article from 2016 about it. Checks I would, out. I wouldn't check that one up because that's that's far enough back. We probably don't have images on that one. There's uh, an confusing. image. Okay. Singular. I don't know. Alfa it Romeo GT V6. Good, Holy what the app. Yeah, that looks like it was great in the idea where they were putting ideas the room where they were putting ideas together and uh god that is some sketchy looking shit i it's i had never driven one before at all um i think the front end looks really good it, i think it looks a, like a little bit better looking e30 you know just the two round lights next to each other mm -hmm. the, the the hood kind of pinches down it's got this power bulge so they had to fit this v6 in it and then they put a power bulge on it because uh they couldn't fit it with the stock metal hood that they already had and then Clarkson had a joke that the, the power bulge was plastic because when the engine would like blow up and shoot the power bulge off, they could replace it for a lot less money than buying a new hood. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. sounds yeah. about right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that was, it was a good time underpowered, but um, I don't know. It just, it just reinforced my idea that overlanding is great. Safari cars are great. Uh, if you have the opportunity to drive a safari car, do it. And if not, buying any cheap car that like, and I know that's, it's a privilege to be able to go, I'm going to go spend $500 on a car I don't mm -hmm. care about. Like that is a privilege to be able to do that. For sure. You know, if you can, uh, it's a really good time. Yep. Yeah. That's, I feel like everyone who buys a cheap rally cross car, snow tires, cheap thing, manual. Yeah, dude. You can get rally cross it. is fantastic. It's really fun. Um, there, I mean, if there's a rally cross in your area, you know, go in with some friends and buy a car or see if someone does a drive and drive. Like it's just, just that alone. Driving a car on dirt with some kind of speed is great. Some of my favorite guys drive a I mean, Dodge Shadow. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Such a pilot. Car. Hey, there's a reason the gambler is so popular. Totally. They, the gambler, they, they told us that that was inspired by all cars. You know, they saw that and they're like, that's a good Oh, idea. really? And then, Bro. and then they made it this giant thing and it's so it's like hundreds of cars oh, that's now. Pretty it's, it's so it's big everywhere too like we have yeah. one here like it's oh, really? okay yeah it's not there as cool as up there but yeah a v6 manual transmission accord coupe on craigslist here for 900 dollars. what Dude, that's so much engine that is so that's much actually more. like one of the i know jack Bruth is the champion of the v6 accord coupe for yeah. better or worse but like amazing cars they're great cars I just, I just drove with it? the Acura Everything. CL Type S and it was like, you know, it's the Acura Type or the Acura Accord Coupe. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get around. It looks, it's boring looking on the outside and most of the inside, but it's a great way to get around. But if for us, if you safari that thing, man, you could go way yeah, too right? fast. Oh, you man. could get in serious trouble. How's, uh, how's the NSX? Um, good. So I drove a 1991 NSX two weeks ago. And now, right now I have the uh, 2020 um this, in the driveway. Is, this is your second time with the new yeah, one it's right the second one time with the new one so the first <laughs> one broke um <laughs> putting it nicely but well so we, we took it out for to shoot photos it was like the first day we had it and we're doing really slow like five to 20 mile an hour you know shots in in malibu and we're just three point turning and um 
all of a sudden the guy that's driving with me, he just goes, uh, will you come look at the dashboard? And literally every single light was on. Every Christmas tree. light. That's not disconcerting every, like, at all. It is like a mall's Christmas tree and there's like different warnings <laughs> flashing. And if you jump ahead, like, so what had happened is a, a sway bar end link had broken and a speed sensor had broken. And oh, what wow. they think happened is it was a press car with like 6,000 miles on it, which is, oh, you know, that's... in dog years, that's like 70,000 miles. But it had also yeah. just been at Laguna Seca um, do, doing lead follow for the, um, the TLX launch. Oh, and, you know, I saw that in the video that there was an NSX yeah. leading. So it, what probably happened is that over the years, some people driving it hard, testing it hard, had weakened this end link. And then in Laguna almost did it all the way in. And then when we turned around on a, like a bumpy driveway, it probably did three wheel motion because it's a stiff chassis and you know, the driveways in, or the pull-offs in Malibu are sometimes like a little bit uneven and that just put too much stress on it broke. So like mm. we didn't do anything. We didn't drive it hard, whatever. Um, it's just something that happened and, and that's unfortunate. So obviously they, we drove it gently for two days. They, they said it was safe to drive. I took it to the dealership, but I drove it to the shop and parked it. And then, um, you know, got this one. So because I'm doing a story for road and track about the old one and the new one. And uh, yeah, that's, that's why it happened. So that's a yeah, but you know, the, the red one that I have now is, you know, it's the same as that one. And the, the car is, like, I don't, I'm not going to scoop myself. So I'm not going to tell you the whole story I'm developing for this, but I, I will say I'm very excited about what I have discovered uh, in researching this article. Um, you know, the old one is imperfect. So is the new one. You know, the old one, I know it's celebrated and it is great and it's, you know, reliable and cool. And man, at the time when that came out, that car must have blown people the fuck away and really made Italy nervous because it looked good and it worked well and it's fast and it has the best shifting of any car I've ever driven. Like the shifting really? feel in the first gen NSX is the like accurate, feels good, light, but not too light. It's amazing. It's like, I, I told my buddy this, who's very skeptical about everything. And he like gets out and he's like, mm, you might be right about that. So it is a, it is an amazing car. I don't think it's without its flaws. I think we always look back at anything from the past with rose colored glasses and it's 100%. like, you know, the whole center stack is straight out of like a Honda Accord and doesn't look special and the gauges don't look special. And some of the controls are like, you know, if you compare it to a modern supercar, like there are things left on the table with that one, but that's why that's because of part sharing and, you know, cost basis stuff. And no different time, than it though, is today. Whew, right. And it, but it's, it is usable. It is comfortable. And it is the, it is a huge part of why exotic cars today are usable practical all that right. stuff right yeah and it's, it's still fucking gorgeous I, it's really good looking it's really cool looking red one flew past it's me the quick, other day. Man. it's still so cool it's it's pretty quick it's 280 horsepower it's not bad and i know there are people that supercharge them or put shorter gears in them all kinds of stuff uh yeah you get it and you, it makes you want to drive it a thousand miles like it really it nice really does car. i just yeah, realized cool. that i was at the NSX reveal in 2012 with Travis Sikulski, like sitting next 2012? to 2012. Yeah, wow. he, was, he was still a Business Insider at the time. That's how that's how old I am, by the way, uh, and how long I've been dealing with car crap. Wow, and how long that car's been out? Yeah, yeah. right. Like that's been out. <laughs> was that the concept debut? Yeah, that was the. Okay. And even even then, Travis, I, I remember Travis being like, "Man, this is taking forever." <laughs> yeah, at wow. that point, it had been pre LFA that they were talking about it. They were taught, yeah, talking about pre LFA. The LFA was already at because that was at that show. I remember seeing mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing the wow. LFA at that show too. And Lexus had another concept, like it was the LFLC LC? or something like that. Oh, yeah. It was well, like a, yeah, the, the LC. It's like a hybrid coupe thing. Yeah, they really, Lexus needs to get rid of the RC and the RCF and, and bring yeah. something else out. That thing is fucking ancient at this point. I just read some, somebody had so, reviewed one like the it's Fuji. So ugly. Yeah, it's, it's so the, ugly, it's so overpriced. It sounds great. It does, but the LC500 has the same engine. So you can be like- Also yeah. sounds great. And <laughs> looks, looks amazing. perfect. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Ross, shut up, it looks great. It's it's really good. Like it's Okay, it's about it's as perfect really, as you can expect. It's, yeah. Really it's when when you see LC500s in person, you're like, oh, they built the concept. It's awesome. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they really did. The profile of that car. That <laughs> yes. car, 
will be sought after from now until 50 years yep. from now because like, it's, it's just good looking it's on my list for like when i get old and gray hair i need to go find an lc 500 yeah. like i don't need to go yeah. find a porsche like i yeah they, they're great LC. cruisers they're soft they're not like they're not sports cars and that's fine like yeah. it, that's an sl 500 that will work forever mm -hmm. yes yeah but and i bet it'll be cheaper than the sls uh yeah probably yeah, for maybe. a while it and depends on how many they there. sell yeah that's true they're not selling any sell. of them sweet we should probably wrap up because it's getting late even on the west coast um <laughs> you could still write and review the show on itunes we were all over the place tonight so yeah. see what the ratings do <laughs> yeah. uh you can like and subscribe on youtube we've been picking up subscribers slowly on youtube you can follow zach yes. social media he's at fake zach clapman on instagram but he's at Zach Clapman on Twitter. Yes. Yeah, and then obviously the Smoking Tire channel uh, and the Smoking Tire podcast channel. Yep. Yeah. Two we do new channels. videos Monday, Wednesday, and new podcast episodes Tuesday, Thursday. Sweet. Uh, you can read what we write on the Hooniverse, the real Hooniverse. And Ross is going someplace else with his writing finally. I have new outlets. Yeah. UTV cool. driver and ATV rider. Nice. Awesome. Yep. So ATVs are fun. Yep. Still am writing things at Hooniverse and the drive. Oh, cool. Very oh, nice. I do also have an everyday driver article this week. Sorry, backing up a little bit. And that's actually, now that I'm saying that, I was like, I'm pretty sure one of the things I wrote is going on Car Bible. So I don't even know. Oh, really? <laughs> Car Bible is great. Car Bible is, is kicking ass. It is. I think I did a, a rooftop, how to install a rooftop tent thing for him. So, which was fun to write <laughs> considering I don't own a rooftop tent. That's really funny. And, and yet you're an authority on it. Yeah, so like, boy. To be honest, it's a much more straightforward process than I think a lot of people think it is. Well, like, I've told probably. you the story about the New York auto show like three years ago when she they had, had the heritage edition. Yeah, yeah, no, Camille. Camille goes, huh, what kind of rack is this? And the fucking whole rack falls off of the truck. And he's like looking around for somebody like a Toyota rep. He was like, you, 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 should, you should, this? You, yeah, that needs to go <laughs> up, back up there and not just be sitting on top of it. Was it one like of people those touch things that attached to the the drip rails on a car that didn't have drip rails? No, it was a it was a Heritage Edition Land Cruiser. It was the stupid, oh, crazy yeah. loud basket. basket thing. Anyway, follow, follow Ross at No Not Like the One from Friends on Instagram. I'm at Olanding mm -hmm. Dad on Twitter and Instagram. That's it. That's our show. That's it. Yep. Nice. Thanks for having me, guys. It's fun. It's always fun. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again.